Since starting this channel at the beginning of this year, I feel like a majority of my content has been focused on investigating paranormal and horror events of the past. While there are millions of ghosts and demons to talk about in history, I want to talk about something more current in the horror community here on YouTube. So tonight we'll be stepping away from the history lectures and deep diving into a horror web series that is going viral on the platform. Gemini Home Entertainment An analog horror series created in 2020 that has made appearances in several big YouTubers content. But as we reach the middle of 2021, I feel like a lot of these channels pounced a little too early and didn't give the web series enough time to show all of its cards. Now I feel like there is a more coherent story as more pieces have been put onto the table by the series' creators. And this analysis of the series is going to have to be divided into parts so I can keep my sanity in the editing room after I finish this recording. There are a total of 15 videos on the Gemini Home Entertainment YouTube channel, as well as several images posted on YouTube and a dedicated Discord server. In this part, I will be explaining the first 7 videos of the channel, but before you continue watching, I would highly suggest going and watching the videos yourself on the web series' channel. They put a lot of effort into making these videos and truly do not receive enough views for the quality of work they do. So if you haven't already, go watch the series on their channel and then come back to Pagan Valley to avoid any spoilers. This will be your only warning. With that, let's begin our investigation into the newest and scariest analog horror series on YouTube. At the beginning of World's Weirdest Animals, we are introduced for the first time to the Gemini Home Entertainment logo, which is present in each video's thumbnail, a blue planet on a black space-like background with white letters beneath. Immediately we can tell that the video appears to be dated, as if it was plucked off a public library shelf in the late 80s or early 90s. We can assume Gemini Home Entertainment is some kind of production studio or public work studio from that era. These videos appear to take inspiration from the distributed PBS documentaries to schools and libraries. Videos that back in the 90s were low in production value, but were intended for educational as well as entertainment content. The video starts with a shot of the earth turning, when the title of the video fades in. The font choice is also very dated, but charming escorted with a soft guitar instrumental playing in the background. We are taken to Wilkin County, Minnesota and introduced to the Greater Prairie Chicken and given some interesting facts about them. Everything seems fine until the video introduces a weird creature called the Woodcrawlers. The video's background music has stopped and now we are forced to look at someone's handheld footage of snow tracks rather than the professional nature shots before. Found all over North America, these animals are excellent hunters, being able to tread most terrain without making a sound. Their preferred nesting homes are inside the homes of large families, where large swarms can adapt easier. After this, the video takes a strange turn by showing us this string of messages. You will hear screaming. They stole their voices. We are then showed some garbage burning and told, Burn the bodies, lest they stand back up again. The video switches once again to a video of a laundry room inside the shown house, where this happens. Now the video takes us back to the handheld camera, but instead of a nature documentary, the video looks like a found footage tape. Our cameraman is standing outside the same house in the middle of the night. We follow him as he tries to get up close to the window and film the family inside. Through the window we can see people standing still, but moving their jaws in unnatural ways as if they were talking but not making any sound. The video brings up Tex again saying, these are fake people. Next, we see some truly horrifying body horror as we see a woman walk past the window, but she clearly isn't walking like a normal person. 
Without any bounce in her step, the woman looks to glide in a perfect line across the room. Our cameraman stands for too long in the window, as one of the wood crawlers notices him and sprints at him. The video seems to distort and jump to the end of the intended nature documentary as we see the opening shot of the earth come back up and its title crawl. Even the safety of the guitar music has returned to close out the video as the Gemini Home Entertainment logo comes up and slowly fades out. So far we have been introduced to monsters known as wood crawlers, who break into people's homes, kill them, and or turn them into some sort of zombies. And the only way to stop the wood crawlers or the zombies is by burning them. In the next video, Storm Safety Tips, we are given the Gemini Home Entertainment logo once again, and the retro PSA videotape style is back. We are shown that this video by Gemini was brought to us by a company called Harbinge Technologies. We get to part 1 of the video titled Prepare in Advance, where we are given steps to what we need in case a dangerous storm appears. The first step is to reinforce your home, improving structural support, replacing roof shingles, and fixing leaks, which is normal storm prep advice. The next step is to install an early warning system to let you know if a dangerous storm is coming. The video has a cheeky additional suggestion to buy their Harbinge Albedo Alarm. Step 3 is to make a storm bunker and to follow the video's measurements. A 10 by 8 foot floor with an 8 inch thick concrete foundation. Next we need a large aluminum hemisphere in the center of our bunker, which is strange. Then we need a shortwave radio, and we need to put it right next to the large hemisphere. We are warned in bold red text to only turn on the radio if we are in an emergency. The video then gets more distorted as we enter part 2 of storm safety tips. What to do during a storm. We are told to quietly take our family to the bunker that we created, and that our home does not belong to us now. We then should turn on the shortwave radio. Apparently we should ignore the sounds created by the radio because they create auditory hallucinations. Then our safety video decides to give us some very odd information. Remain calm. Your tears are filled with salt. Lastly, we get to part 3 of the video, what to do after a storm. If we believe the storm is past, we can leave our bunker and look for damages. If our house has been damaged, we should look for movement inside. And based on the previous video, I can probably imagine what we should be looking for. We are told that we should hear a chime near our house, which signals that the storm has passed over. The audio in the safety video then dissipates as this message is shown. Look to the field. Do you see the lights? Return to your bunker. Our safety presentation then cuts to footage of a field as dozens of light orbs appear before us. Now we are told to listen, under your feet, crawling through the floor. We are shown what looks like some kind of storm siren blaring. Whatever it is, it is playing the chime that the video told us was supposed to mean that the storm has passed. The video cuts back to the regular presentation saying that we are now well equipped to defend against storms. As the credits begin to roll, we are introduced to a name, Remy Abode. This is the first time so far that we are given a character in these videos. We can speculate on who Remy is. 
Maybe he is just the original presentation's creator, or a figure at this Harbinge Technologies. Or worse, perhaps he is our brave cameraman that seemingly survived the house in Weird Animals. Anyway, I doubt we have seen the last of this name. Storm Safety Tips ends like the last video, with the Gemini logo closing the video for us. So far we know there are these creatures called wood crawlers that apparently can dig through the ground under our homes during events called storms. If they manage to get to you, then you are turned into some zombie-like creature that can only be stopped by being burned. Besides them, we are introduced to another threat, the lights in the field. But how the lights in the wood crawlers are connected is still unknown. Our next video on the channel is titled The Deep Blue. This Gemini production appears to be an ocean documentary. The video starts by introducing us to the Geneva production company who made this tape for Gemini to distribute. The Deep Blue title appears over some scenic ocean footage and a tropical music score in the background. Text comes up and says that our oceans are full of mystery and wonder. Let's take a look at some secrets hidden beneath the surface. We are then shown some footage of a school of fish and a massive blue whale. Then we are told that despite its beauty, the ocean is a very dangerous place. We are shown the Marianas Trench and told it is the deepest place on earth. A graphic comes up and shows us the trench and its small tunnel at the bottom called the Demesia Tunnel, which is at an unknown depth. Our audio cuts and the video begins to distort until a messed up version of the graphics showed before is presented, saying nothing can live in Mariana's Trench. The creature that reveals itself to us is some kind of bright orb with long tentacles coming out from under it. We can assume that this is what lies at the bottom of Mariana's Trench. Our video cuts back to normal before the credits roll and we are told that this video was also created by Remy Abode. The Gemini logo reappears and the video ends. So now we have a few more pieces to this very large puzzle. Let's start with the creature shown at the bottom of the ocean. Its orb-like head looks familiar to the ones we saw at the end of Storm Safety Tips. But those were on the surface, and this thing apparently lives in the deepest parts of the ocean. Without a doubt, they are connected. But are these the same creature? We can't really be certain. Also, it appears this video was also created by Remy Abode, but a different company produced the film. So does this Remy Abode work for both Geneva Productions and Harbinge Technologies? Or perhaps our character is an employee of Gemini Home Entertainment and simply in charge of the distribution? Either way, it seems that Remy is going to be more involved with these videos as we press on. The next video is titled Artificial Computer Learning and it is presented to us by another new company called Regnad Computing. It begins by telling us it is going to present an experiment where a computer's artificial intelligence will create an original children's storybook. As the experiment begins, the first story goes like this. Our presentation continues and explains that the AI will rewrite the story and become more refined with each version, so that patterns and story consistency are more easily visible for us.
The presentation quickly explains the I hear you part as the computer re refining its usage of proper nouns and grammar. We are then told that the AI is creating much more complex sentences as it diverges from the original story. So our fourth story goes like this. The artificial intelligence seems to go manic as it quickly creates graphics for us to examine. The first is what looks like two planets. The larger one has some kind of pupil that is staring at the smaller one. It is labeled visual distortion. Also the words intent and alive come up. Then we quickly get a computer rendering of the creature shown in the deep blue ocean. Some sort of eye with tentacles coming out of it, with a long line illustrating that it is deep below what we can assume is the surface. The normal presentation cuts back and gives no explanation to what the AI had just produced, simply stating that the whole experiment has been a great success in demonstrating the computing power of Regnad computing. Then we get an ominous ad saying that Regnad is planning on having the AI be of commercial use within a year. Yeah, I think you may want to iron out some of the bugs in your system before giving this to people. So, the AI has explained a lot of what may be happening in Gemini Home Entertainment. We can assume these big spheres in the computer's diagrams are of planets and the much larger one is some sort of living being. Somehow it has created offspring that has invaded Earth in the form of the eye monster deep under the ocean, and also somehow the monster is making other monsters that can roam the surface in the form of the beasts called wood crawlers that are attacking families in their homes and turning them into mindless drones. And whatever this power is appears to be able to control computers and distort messages shown to us. Could this be the quiet invasion of some kind of aliens? The fifth video in the Gemini series is called Our Solar System. This video begins with a diagram showing all of the planets. It zooms in on the sun and we learn some some cut damn. It zooms in on the sun, and we learn some fun facts about it. We get the same for Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. But when the video talks about Jupiter, 
we get this out of place one liner talking about the big red spot on the planet, saying it is not an eye. The video continues on to Saturn. During its facts, we are told that the rings of Saturn are the gateway. Uranus has the same normal facts, but when Neptune is presented, we are told that a large storm rages in the planet called the Great Dark Spot, and that is the lens. Then it says that Neptune has been mutated. Again, our music cuts and we are shown a new red planet not part of our solar system, a planet called Iris. Next we are shown Pluto and its fun facts, before the title card rolls and we are again told that the video was created by Remy Abode, who didn't help create the Regnad computing AI. So this video revealed a lot of what is happening in the world of Gemini Home Entertainment. We can confirm that the wood crawlers, the lights in the field, and the monster in the Marianas Trench are all aliens that apparently have come from a planet called Iris in order to invade Earth. We know the Great Dark Spot is being used as some kind of transport spot in the shape of an eye for aliens to get to Earth from the rings of Saturn, which for some reason is their gateway into our solar system. But the Great Dark Spot is actually a dangerous storm on Neptune, and it only comes around every cycle. During this storm, Gemini has instructed us to build a bunker with a strange sphere with a radio next to it, along with an odd looking storm siren that makes a chime sound for when the dark great spot has passed. But there are still some big questions needing to be answered, like how did Gemini Home Entertainment learn all this information? Why are they telling us? Are they even our friends, or have the aliens taken control of Gemini like they had done with the Regnad computing children's story? Who is Remy Abode, and what does he have to do with all of this? The next video presentation by Gemini is Camp Information. In this video we are taking a tour of a summer camp called Moonlight Acres, which was founded in 1930. After being shown several normal activities, we are told about the lights in the sky event, and we are shown three glowing orbs that we have seen in previous videos. In the top right hand corner, where the name of the activity should be, we see the true name of the lights in the sky event, Harvest. We are then shown several different types of cabins to stay in. The presentation even says they're burrow free, meaning nothing will be crawling around under the floorboards. After seeing a few more cabins, we are shown a familiar image that we saw back in Storm Safety Tips, the siren that emits the chime sound whenever the storm is passed. After that horrific scene, we are treated to a peaceful campfire where the presentation introduces us to the legends of Moonlight Acres.
1935, rumors of strange, well-dressed men visiting the camp began to make rounds. It is said that the men would ask to enter the camp administrator's cabin every night for years. One night, a deal was made, and the strange men left the camp, never to be seen again. Another legend is the sightings of skinwalkers around the camp in the 1930s. The word skinwalkers glows red, and the video begins to distort like all the others had before. Now that was a lot for us to take in, so let's try and take a look at each piece of this. We are quickly shown a leg or arm of some monster rising from the ground. Then we are told there are vessels in the camp as we speak. Let's recall that when the woodcrawlers got you, they would turn you into mindless zombies they could control. So as we are shown this list naming off camp counselors, we could be getting shown a list of woodcrawlers running the camp. Lastly, we see the monster in the field move, and the knocking door finally open, only to jump back to the end credits of the Moonlight Acres tour guide. Again, this presentation was presented by Remy Abode, before the Gemini logo closes off the video. So now we learn a little bit more information about what is going on. Not only are aliens walking around Earth, but they have been around since the 1930s, and apparently harvesting people at Moonlight Acres in the Lights in the Sky event every summer. But who were the well-dressed strangers entering the camp in 1935? Were they aliens? Or maybe the government? Regardless, it's beginning to feel like Gemini solves one mystery it presented just to give us three more at the end of every video. The last video we will investigate in this part will be the Lethal Omen commercial. As the title suggests, this video is meant to be a trailer for a video game produced by Regnat Computers, the same people that were in charge of the AI tutorial video before. After the initial ad, we are shown full gameplay of a game that looks to be made in the early 90s. It is a first person shooter and it takes place in the previously mentioned Moonlight Acres where we can see a lot of the items and imagery given to us through all the videos so far. We see wood crawlers, cabins, lights, the storm bunker, the tentacle monster, the storm siren, and even the strange planet Iris before our gameplay demonstration cuts out. However, the most fascinating part about this video and the entire series is that the game being promoted by Gemini Home Entertainment is actually a real-life playable game in our world. The creators of this project have went as far as to create a full, working video game for our enjoyment to help tell the story. And conveniently, the announcement and release of this video game is halfway through the series as the channel stands on YouTube. There's a great amount of production value being put into the Gemini story. And now you can understand why I and a lot of people consider it criminal how little attention this channel is getting. Our video ends with the creator of the video game being revealed, and wouldn't you know it, it is our friend Remy Abode once again. Apparently he has taken a break from creating nightmare fueled videotapes and decided to make a full on horror game for Regnan Computing. The last thing we see is the Gemini logo for a final time. And now with more context, we can see that the Gemini Home Entertainment logo 
is in fact the planet Neptune, and the spot at the bottom left hemisphere is the planet Iris sitting in the great dark spot of the planet. So, what is Gemini Home Entertainment so far? Well, we know that alien monsters have been preying on humans since the 1930s as told in the Camp Information video. These aliens include the zombified humans and hunters called woodcrawlers, the lights in the fields that we can assume to be eyes, and the enormous tentacle monster at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. We know from the AI experiment that these aliens have the ability to warp all of our digital presentations and electronics in general. We also know from storm safety tips and our solar system that these aliens can attack when Neptune's great dark spot is visible. Then an alien planet called Iris can travel through the rings of Saturn and appear in the sky of Earth. Apparently, these aliens want to harvest humans as Camp Moonlight Acres holds the Lights in the Sky event every summer, which we can safely assume means they are sending large families out to be sacrificed to the aliens every year. And to do this, the aliens have zombified camp counselors that corral the people into the fields for the event. It has also become so routine that even storm sirens have been created to alert people when the great dark spot will emerge and when it disappears. I said at the beginning of this video that I was going to put my investigation of Home Gemini Entertainment into parts in order to keep these videos a little shorter for all of you. With that being said, this will be the end of part 1, but I do have a little surprise for all of you. Before creating part 2, I will host my first live stream on the Pagan Valley channel, and during it I will be playing through Lethal Omen for all of you, as well as doing a small Q&A before and after the live stream. I will make a post on YouTube with the official live stream time, but expect it to be in the late evening like 8 or 9 o'clock. So if you got some time, why not show up with your friends and watch me lose my shit as a cut. So if you got some time, why not show up with your friends and watch me lose my shit as I play a horror game created by the people who have made everything you've seen so far. Also, I want to give a quick shout out for my new Twitter account. I just recently set it up and I think it will really help Pagan Valley feel more like an actual community for all of you. So if you want to be kept up to date with my channel, I would suggest going and following me there. Tweet at me what you think about Gemini Home Entertainment, or comment what you think down below. Be sure to like this video to help Pagan Valley appease the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe to see more of the content that I love to make and you love to watch. With that, I will keep you posted, and this has been Pagan Valley, and I wish you all a good evening.